Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. My name is Janae and today is Seattle Seahawks collaboration with Lisa and Diamond and Stitches. And we have 19 questions that will be random tag questions that we'll be answering tonight. So get your whips ready, get your beverage ready, whichever you decide to drink. I won't judge you, promise. <laughs> Anyway, um, if you're new to the channel, a big howdy do. And if you like what you see and you like what you hear, please hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you join the family. Also, don't forget to hit the bell. The bell will indicate when I've uploaded my next video. So by saying that, guys, um, I am almost, almost done with this painting. And if you hear any growling or weird sounds in the background, that's Bella. She's playing. <laughs> Um, and they have to play in the craft room. You know, they have to be around me when I'm recording. Anyway, um, just to kind of recap, about 10 weeks ago, I approached Lisa from Diamond and Stitches to see if she would be interested in doing a collaboration with me. And the reason why I approached her is because I noticed that she had two Seahawks diamond paintings and I found that she is a huge Seahawks and Washington University Husky fan and I am as well. I'm originally from the Seattle Tacoma area but I moved to Canada in 2001 and as I got to know Lisa I found out that she is originally from Alberta, Canada and moved to the Seattle area. I'm not sure exactly when, but I'm I'm thinking it was kind of close to the same time period that I moved to Canada. So we have a lot of similarities there. I also learned that Lisa is uh, allergic to wool, like I am, and we're both swimmers. So I've learned a lot from doing this collaboration with Lisa and also I can't thank Lisa enough for agreeing to do this. Um, it has been fun. I've enjoyed doing this with her and getting to know Lisa. So I'm going to have Lisa's channel and information down below in the description. If you haven't checked her out or haven't seen any of her videos, please go check her out, guys. She is funny, hilarious. I uh, love her to death. She's the sweetest person that I've met, and um, I am so very honored to do this with her. So, after we answer the questions, I'm going to bring the camera up so that you can actually see what this picture looks like now. It is gorgeous. Oh my gosh, I am so pleased with the way it's turning out. But, yeah, there's always a but there, isn't there? <laughs> the only thing that I can complain about in regards to this picture is that the darker colors like your 310s, your 939s, and I believe it is 823 all seem to have little numbly bits on some of the drills. Not all of them, but on some of them. So you really have to kind of be a little bit picky on which, you're, which one you're going to place on your canvas. Unfortunately with the 8 23s I can't be too picky because I'm running really low on them so I have to be a little bit careful with those and last night I was working on this painting only because I was so concerned that I was gonna run out of some of this color that I decided you know what I'm just gonna fill in those spots that I'm afraid I'm gonna lose color or not lose but um, run out of color just to make sure that I didn't and luckily I didn't so now it's basically three and three to four colors that I have to um, put on here uh, right in here and then just right about in here there's a little bit more colors but I don't believe I'm going to run out of colors, but I'm going to keep my fingers crossed because as I said, one of the colors I'm working in right now is getting kind of low. So I get nervous when I see them get low like that. As I said in the beginning, we are going to be answering 19 random tag questions. 
So if you've got your whips and your drink, let's go ahead and start those questions. So question one, what would be the theme song of your life? <laughs> um, well, I think that all depends on um, a few factors. The time of day, the circumstances, and where I'm at. <laughs> so if we go with the time of day um, and I'm commuting to work, there is a song called Get Out of My Way. <laughs> and that's me. Get out of my way. <laughs> um, now, if I'm in a scenario where I'm really excited or really upset about something, the song that would fit that would be Freak Out. <laughs> Literally, because that's what I do. I freak out. Um... And then there's one other song, or actually, there's a few more. Um, during work, sometimes I will hum, and it's an old song, so this will age me, but it's called Roller Coaster, because <laughs> that's what I feel like at work sometimes, up and down, up and down. <laughs> At five o'clock in the evening, when it's time to leave work and go home, it's it's in sync's bye bye, <laughs> and uh, periodically out of the day, I would say that the theme song of my life would be "If I Had a Million Dollars" by the Bare Naked Ladies, <laughs> because if I had a million dollars, I could retire. <laughs> so those are my theme songs. <laughs> It didn't say I had to have one, <laughs> or did it? I don't remember. No, it didn't. It did not say that I had to have one, so there you go. Okay, question two. What has been your favorite memory of this year? Okay, guys, this is gonna be a bit of a story, So, but it's a, it's a fun story. I'm just trying to see where I can pis position my tray. I'm going to have to move my canvas a little bit. Hopefully not knock over all my drills like I did about five minutes ago. Okay. So, my favorite memory of this last year was when we went to Mexico. Me and my husband flew to Mexico in February and we were there for 14 days. Now, my husband's birthday is Valentine's Day, so he's a Valentine's baby. And because it was a milestone birthday, don't tell him I told you, but he turned 60. <laughs> uh, I decided that I wanted to throw him a surprise party. Now, the surprise party was basically taking him out to our favorite restaurant in Puerto Vallarta, and you know getting cake and some balloons and basically having a family that was down with us uh, be a part of it now I knew that my husband's sister and husband were going to be there so my sister-in-law and her husband and then I found out about three months later that his cousin from British Columbia and his wife were going to be down in Puerto Vallarta during the same time. So I thought, oh great, that's perfect. Now my husband really wanted my sister and my brother-in-law to be there as well. But my sister informed my husband that there was absolutely no way she was going to be able to get the time off to go. Now that's where the surprise was because she sent me a message about a month before I actually booked all of this and let me know that she actually in fact got the time off from work and she wanted to surprise him with uh, them arriving on his birthday. So for nine months I knew my sister was going to be there at the same, you know, on his birthday basically. 
and I had to keep that a secret and it's not easy to keep things a secret um, from my husband so I had to be very clever in doing it now when the 14th arrived it was me and my husband and his sister and um, brother-in-law and then his cousin and wife and we all met for breakfast and then my sister and her husband were going to fly in around 1.30 in the afternoon. So I was overhearing my husband and his sister talking about doing something in the afternoon. Now I kept this a secret from everyone because I figured, you know what, the least amount of people that knew about this surprise the better the surprise because it wouldn't get out right that was my thinking but all of a sudden now my husband and his sister and brother-in-law were making plans for the afternoon and I'm like oh, oh I, I gotta say something because um, I can't just outright say no you can't do that right so when I knew it was safe to do so I pulled his sister aside and I told her what was happening now we all they all knew about dinner they all knew where we were going other than my husband he had no clue but they didn't know about my sister and brother-in-law so I told my sister-in-law you know what was going on and she was really excited she's like oh this is great because she said you know he really wants them to be here and I said I know he does but they wanted it to be a surprise so I said you can't make plans for this afternoon because they're going to be arriving in, in about you know around 1 2 o'clock in the afternoon depending on how fast they can get through the airport so she says okay well we'll just drop it and um, hopefully you know the guys will forget about it ever even being mentioned so we got through lunch or we got through breakfast and then we decided to go shopping and then around 12.30, quarter to one, we all decided it was time to have lunch. And that's when I started getting a little bit more anxious because I hadn't heard from my sister. I had no clue what was going on. And she said that she was going to contact me once they arrived at the airport. And I couldn't track their flight because if I did, my husband would know about it. And the reason why I say track their flight is I have a, an app on my phone that tracks flights. And I do that because my husband, in his job, sometimes he has to fly up north. And I like to be able to know where his flight is. So he put this on my phone. Anyway, uh, I, was, I, I didn't want to track their flight because I didn't want him to be suspicious about anything. So... I was kind of hoping that that she would send me a text or some type of message to let me know that they had arrived at the airport. So I was getting a little nervous. So about, I would say a quarter after one, my phone finally made a funny noise. So I looked and it was my sister. She messaged me and the message was, I kid you not. I was, I was like, what? <laughs> she messaged me. She says, just wanted you to know that mom's okay and that we're heading home. And I sat there and read that at least 10 times thinking, okay, something's wrong with my mother and you guys didn't get on the flight to come here and you didn't say anything until just now. That made absolutely no sense to me. I literally was at this point beside myself because I was worried that something went wrong with my mother which I had no clue that there was anything wrong with her to begin with so the guys decided that they wanted to do some more walking around and I had to make up some excuse not to go with them because I wanted to get back to the hotel to try to figure out what was going on and when it was safe, I went up to my sister-in-law and said, listen, um, I'm going to go back to the hotel. You keep the boys 
occupied and she goes what's wrong and I said well I got some strange text message from my sister and I'm not quite sure what the heck's going on and she goes well what does it say so I pulled out my phone and I showed her what the message said and she read it and she just kind of looked at me and she goes well is there something wrong with your mom and I said I don't know I said I have absolutely no idea what she's talking about and then she says well did she say that she wasn't coming and I said no she never said anything to me about it so she says well you know what I'm gonna go with you to the hotel and we'll just make sure that the boys go do what they want to do but we had to make sure that they came back at four so that's what we told them you guys go ahead and do what you want to do but make sure you're back at the the um make sure that you're back at the hotel by four o'clock because we wanted to get dressed and ready for dinner dinner was at six and they're like well okay we'll do whatever so they took off and um we headed to the hotel now as we were walking to the hotel we were trying to figure out this message so uh, my sister-in-law she said you know what? why don't you text her back and see if she responds and I thought well you know that's a good idea I never thought about doing it so I sent her a text and I figured she'd probably respond if she were at home she would respond within you know 10 minutes so we got to the hotel and about 20 minutes passed and I knew I didn't receive anything from her and I'm like okay there's something not right with this so my sister-in-law said well, you know what let's go upstairs let's get changed let's go sit down by the pool and um, she says I'm sure she'll contact you don't don't panic just yet and so that's what we did we went upstairs we got changed went down to the pool and we just started talking I would say maybe 30 minutes passed and I kept looking towards the lobby to see if they would show up and um, I didn't have a really good view of the lobby so I finally said to my sister-in-law I said you know what I'm going to go over towards the bar and I'm gonna see if I can see anything in the lobby and um, if I do I'll let you know and she's like okay so I got up and I was walking towards the bar and as you approach the bar you can actually see the entire lobby and I noticed this gentleman that looked a lot like my brother-in-law sitting um, off to the side on a couch and sure enough it was him and I went up there and I'm like what in the world are you guys doing and he's looking at me because well what do you mean and I said well where's where's my sister I said because she scared the bejeebers out of me I said so I want to talk to her and he says, well she's over there getting the key to our room so I, <laughs> I go up to my sister and I said what the heck is this message about and she looked at me and she says oh she says well I was trying to send you a message to let you know that we were here but I I wanted to make sure it was sort of in a code so that um, that Rick wouldn't know that we were here and I'm like you scared me I thought something went wrong with mom and that you stayed home and she goes, no no I just wanted to make it. I'm like oh my god you need to tell me you were going to do this so all of a sudden you know you get that feeling of thank God nothing went wrong so then I said to her after I was after that was cleared up I said you know you guys need to hurry up I said because um, Rick and um, my brother-in-law will be coming back pretty soon to the hotel and you know you don't want to run into him and she goes oh don't worry about it we already did <laughs> I'm like what she goes, well she says oddly enough we pulled up in a cab to the front of the uh, to the front of the hotel and you know they have two or three people waiting for cabs to pull up and these people what they'll do is they come up and they grab your luggage they put it on that trolley thing and then they go to the elevator because the lobby is actually a floor below street level 
so they'll take the elevator down to the lobby. So that's basically what they did. And so my sister was paranoid. She was worried that my husband was going to be lurking around the corner. So she was trying to be very careful just in case. And as they were approaching the elevator, my sister said that she could hear my husband's voice in the elevator. And she was telling the guy that had their luggage that they had to hide, that they couldn't take the elevator because the person that was in the elevator, they were trying to surprise. Um, unfortunately, the gentleman didn't understand English very well. So needless to say, they didn't get out of the way and the doors of the elevator opened up. There's my husband. And she said, because unfortunately I wasn't there, but she said his mouth had dropped open. He was in like complete shock. And then the first thing he said to them was, what the hell are you guys doing here? <laughs> so that was, that was a big, big surprise. And then um, we went to dinner at six. And like I said, he didn't know where we, where we were going. And um, as we were approaching the restaurant, he figured it out. He's like, oh, yes, we're going to the German restaurant. <laughs> and funny thing is, is there, that restaurant has the most um, amazing German restaurant. And it is so good. Um, so we went there for dinner. And then um, I had hired a driver to pick us all up drop us off at the restaurant and then pick us up at the restaurant and take us back to the hotel. Now, when we were at the restaurant, the hotel um, arranged to bring in balloons and cake and some, um, and some party favor things, you know, like the confetti and all that stuff. And they decorated the, the bar. And so by the time we came back, from the restaurant, we walked right, to, we told everyone, well, let's go to the bar and get a drink. And uh, so we all went to the bar and, I mean, I literally had to drag my husband because he had absolutely no idea what it was, what was going on. So he was talking to everybody. I mean, that's my husband. He will talk to anyone and everyone. And I'm like, come on, come on. Finally, he gets to the bar and he notices all the balloons. And I had like, black and white balloons, um, a couple of balloons that said over the hill, you know, I mean, just kind of corny stuff, but it was fun. And uh, we spent the rest of the night in the bar drinking and having a good time. So yeah, it was great. We had a great time. Oh, I think I'm gonna have to change the wax in this pen. Okay, so let's go with question three. What is the craziest, most daring thing you've ever done? Oh, that's easy. <laughs> um, zip lining. And again, this is kind of a funny story. Um, the first year that we went to Mexico, me and my husband, he decided that he was going to book a couple of tours for us to do because we had never been to Puerto Vallarta that year. It was our first year. One of the tours that he booked was an ATV zip line tour. Now, if you guys have seen my phobia video, and that's basically about planes, I have a phobia of anything um, regarding heights. I am not one that likes heights, and I do not like really super fast things. So I don't know what he was thinking when he booked the zip line tour because he knows I wouldn't have done that. But un unfortunately, um, he didn't tell me until like the day that we went. Now, ATVs, I love ATVs and I enjoyed myself with that. And that was the first half of the day. This was a full day tour. This was an eight hour tour. So the first half of the day was on um, ATVs, and it was great. I loved it, loved it. But then the second half of the day was ziplining. Now, my husband told me 
that it was an ATV zip line tour. Now, when I hear the word zip line, that means one. One zip line. Yeah. Um, that's not how it was. <laughs> So after we had lunch, and believe me, if you're afraid of heights, eating before zip lining was not a smart idea. But um, before you got, before you started in the zip lines, they put you in line. You had to grab a harness, a um, locking mechanism, something that it's like a handlebar and it's got wheels, that thing, I don't know what it's called, and a helmet and gloves. Now the helmet, I'm thinking, you know, if I'm falling off of that zip line, that helmet is going to do me no bit of good. Absolutely. I'm dead. There is no way that helmet's going to help me, <laughs> but apparently it's something that they require. Anyway, after you get all of your equipment, then you sit in bleachers and then one of the um, employees comes out and they tell you about the zip lines and, um, how to slow down, how to speed up, you know, how to get yourself out of um, a position where if your zip line uh, stops halfway down the line, and believe me, mine did once, scared the, oh, I wanted out of there. But, you know, anyway, that's another story. Um, anyway, uh, so he's explaining all this, and I keep hearing him use the word zip lines with an S <laughs> and I'm sitting there thinking, wait a minute, this is supposed to be one zip line, not many. So I waited patiently for him to do his spiel. And then once he was done, I raised my hand up like a little schoolgirl, and he looked at me and he goes, yes. And I said, I noticed that you're using the word zip lines. And he goes, yeah. And I said, so how many zip lines are we talking about here? <laughs> and um, he kind of had this puzzled look on his face. And he looked at me and he goes, well, there's 11. I wanted to kill my husband. I was like, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> so I looked at him. I must have been horrified because these people that were in our group, there was 10 people in our group. A few of them started laughing because obviously it was written on my face that I was about to commit murder. <laughs> so anyway, he just, my husband just looked at me and he goes, oh, stop being a baby. You can do it. You can do it. And I'm like, uh, no, I can't. And he goes, yes, you can. So anyway, <laughs> we go to the first zip line, which was this, the shortest, shortest meaning from one side to the other, not shortest as in from the rope to the ground <laughs> because it was pretty um, high off the ground. But um, the first zip line you did was pretty short. It didn't take long to get across. And as I said, we had 10 people in that group. My husband was the first one to go. And as I'm watching him fly down that rope, I'm thinking to myself, Oh, hell no. You are not getting me on that. That's what I was thinking. I didn't say anything at first. So the uh, gentleman that was uh, putting the latches on the rope and putting the little steering brake mechanism on the rope gestured to me to come forward. And I'm like, oh, no, no, you just take the next one. I'm I'm still thinking here. <laughs> He kind of smiled at me and he goes, okay. So he took the next one and I watched that and I'm like, oh, there's just no way I can't do that. So I think there were eight people that went down that rope <laughs> and my husband was telling me, he says, you know, after I eventually, I did eventually do it, but after I eventually did it and I got across, my husband looked at me, he goes, I didn't think you were going to do it. And I said, I didn't want to do it, but I felt like I had to. I felt pressured to do it, to be honest. Anyway, um, after that first one, then we found out that we had to climb uh, a fairly steep hill to get to the next line. So each line 
was longer and faster in speed. So the one line that I got caught up in um, where it actually stopped about three quarters of the way down was called Speedy Gonzales. Now if that doesn't tell you something. <laughs> the reason why they call it Speedy Gonzales is because it's the longest zip line. It's the highest one they have and um, when the winds get through there it can actually cause you to go faster. But uh, this was like the second to the last zip line so by this time I was actually enjoying it. And what ultimately happened was I was going down the line and it was actually picking up speed, but then all of a sudden a gust of wind came from this side and moved or shifted my body off to this side. In doing that, it caused the braking mechanism to start um, braking or slowing me down. And it I just stopped like three quarters of the way down. So the... Um, guy that was on the other side because there's two people there's two employees that go with you in these tours one stays behind and makes sure that they latch you up and get you on the line properly and then the other one is on the other side um, waiting to basically catch you or stop you from you know flying into the hillside anyway <laughs> anyway um the guy on the other side noticed that i was starting to slow down so he was already getting prepared and I, yeah, I stopped and he got himself up on the line. He did the, you know, I don't know what they call that, but the back and forth where he actually moved himself up the line, grabbed me um, with his legs and then started pulling me um, back to the other end. So needless to say, I got off of there, but yeah, it was, it was, um, quite interesting you know being afraid of heights and being stuck up there I think I was probably stuck there for maybe a couple of minutes and yeah it was it was uh it was okay after after I knew that he was coming to get me <laughs> so would I do it again no I can say I can I can easily say I can check that off my bucket list <laughs> and no I will not do it again my sister wants to do it but I'm mm -mm, no I'm not I, I just can't <laughs> okay so let's go to the next question question four what talents do you possess that not a lot of people know about um this question I had to ask my husband because uh, I didn't know what to say on that one, to be honest. Um, it's just not something that I think about often. But so I asked him, I said, is there like a special talent that you think I have that I possess or, you know, that I just don't recognize or, and he started thinking about it and he says, you know, he says, I have to say, you're really good about making ordinary um, side dishes or um, food meals uh, and really changing them to make them taste far better than what they are and I thought I don't know if that would be considered a talent but okay we'll go with that <laughs> so what he was telling me was um, there are times where I'll pick up like um, uh, craft macaroni and cheese or um, other side dishes and I add stuff to it so it it's changes it a bit it doesn't change it completely but it does change it a bit I also cook um, without measuring and I don't go by recipes I basically go by taste so if there's something that I like let's say I go to a restaurant and I want to try something different and I really like that I will note what I can taste in that and I will try to duplicate it or replicate it and there's been a couple of recipes I've been able to do that with um, and yeah I enjoy doing that but I don't do it very often nowadays because of of course I'm watching my calories but um, yeah he's like yeah you know you you're really good about changing basic you know 
food staples and changing them into something completely different. Now the only problem with doing that though is you can't always duplicate it. So if you don't write down what you've put in, how much you put in and all that stuff, you really can't duplicate it. But um, yeah, it does turn out pretty good. Sometimes they don't turn out as good as I would hope, but yeah, he doesn't complain, so I'm happy. <laughs> so let me just pour these out for a second here. Oops. So that was 310. Okay, so the next question. Question five. Which TV sitcom would you star in? This is really going to date me because I don't watch sitcoms. In fact, I don't even know if this is considered a sitcom that I'm going to bring up, but I did watch a lot of this, and that would be The X-Files. I loved The X-Files. I thought it was a very um, unusual show, but not any more unusual than like Twin Peaks or, I mean, honestly, The Simpsons. Those, those two shows were just as strange, so... <laughs> But in their own way. Um, but I did really like the X-Files. I thought it was great. Okay, so let's go with the next question. That is question six. Which character would you play if you were in that sitcom? Scully. I liked her character. You know, I mean, she was really good. She That actress, I don't know her name. I don't know her name offhand, but she really did a great job playing Scully. So I really did enjoy watching that show, and I really loved her um, character. So definitely would be Scully. Okay. Next question. Question seven. If you could play a scene in a movie, what would it be, and what character would you play? There are a lot of movies I enjoy watching. I mean, a lot. And it's a variety of different types of movies. Um, but I just recently watched, again, the Twilight series. And if I were to play one of those characters, I would really love to play um, Alice. I really loved her character in that movie. And she was just, she was really... A great character and yeah I would definitely want to play her okay so question eight if you could make a difference in the world what would you be known for I would say I would be known for compassion I watch the I shouldn't say I watch my husband watches the news a lot I listen to it I don't watch it and it really saddens me what's going on in the world today I just don't understand why people just can't get along and it, it's it's sad to see people's you know not only see uh, people struggle but to you know people innocent people getting hurt or actually killed um, it it to me, just doesn't make any sense. So, if I could make a difference in the world, that's what I would want to do. Is, you know, try to bring, try to bring peace in the world and joy. And um, you know, eliminate all this fighting and bickering and nonsense that goes on. So. Yeah, that's, that's what I would hope to be known for is compassion. Question nine. What do you like being complimented on? Oh, geez. <laughs> um, this is going to be kind of an odd answer. Again, you know, there's just not enough respect and compassion in the world today. People are so focused on themselves and the mighty dollar that they forget about 
you know, it, they, they just forget about life in general. And the reason why I bring this up is because I work in a fairly big organization and I put in a lot of extra hours. I don't get paid for it and I don't ask for it and I don't expect it. But it would really be nice if, you know, certain people would recognize the hard work and the extra time that others put in to keep that organization going and they don't they don't recognize it and if they do they don't say anything it just it's disappointing you know you work really hard for um, an organization and you don't get recognized for the hard work that you put in and I I just think that if you want um, employees that work hard and um, will do just about anything to help out you know you don't ignore them it's sad to see that that's that happens you know it just what happened to the world why why do people you know why do they not care I don't know maybe I just um, maybe I'm just too old-fashioned but that's just the way I see it you know anyway question 10 describe your partner in three words pain in the ass <laughs> I'm just teasing <laughs> I'm just teasing no 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 best friend rock he's my everything my my husband is everything to me and um, my only regret is that I didn't meet him sooner. I'm the type of person that always believes that there's a re reason behind everything. For some reason, my path and his path was intended not to cross until it did in 2007. And sometimes I look at him and I'm thinking, you know, I was robbed from spending more time with him. Not that he's ill or anything he's not but that's how I see it is that you know I wish I could have spent more time with him or I wish I had met him sooner okay so question 11 how would your friends describe you I would say they would describe me as strange <laughs> no I'm kidding I would say that they would say I was uh, helpful and um, willing to go out of my way to help them out if you know if they need it. So let's go to question twelve. What is your favorite quote? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. The golden rule. Okay, so let's go with question 13. If you could travel to one of the planets, which planet would you go to? Honestly, I've never thought of that. And the reason why I don't think of that is I have a hard time with the knowledge that in order to go into space you would have to sit in a tin can knowing that there is going to be a major explosion underneath you and that is going to propel you up into space no so um that question would be really hard for me to answer because honestly i wouldn't know now, if there was a better way of getting into space without having to worry about the explosion part, okay, I could consider something. But uh, yeah, right now, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I really couldn't. So let's go to the next question. Question 14. What would you rather do, perform in a circus or in an acrobatic dance group? Wow, okay, um, at my age, 
an acrobatic dance group is out of the question. No way. My knees would not be able to handle it. Although I do love to dance. Um, I'm not good at it. I'll be honest. I'm not good at it. But I love to dance. Um, so that leaves me with the circus. And yeah. Um, I don't know if I'd want to do that either. But uh, if it was something that I could do without it you know, being... Uh, too physically involved yeah I wouldn't mind doing the circus question 15 if a millionaire decides to fund your all expenses paid one week trip to anywhere where would you go and what would you do oh I would go to Switzerland and the reason why I would go there is because that's where my father's side of the family originated from um, my father is third generation American and a lot of our family are, I should say a lot of his family still live in Switzerland. So it would be nice to visit family that I've never met and see Europe. Although my husband's family is originally from Germany and my husband is first generation Canadian um, he has gone to Germany a couple of times and has warned me that Switzerland is extremely expensive. So if we were to ever go there, we would probably stay in Germany, but make it a day trip in um, Switzerland. So yeah, it would be interesting to go check that out. Number 16. What is the funniest thing someone has said to you? Hey, you. <laughs> And I'm being serious. Um, there has been a couple of times where, you know, people will recognize you, but they can't remember your name. So they just say, hey, you. And you know what? I respond to it. You know, what the heck? <laughs> so question 17, what would you like to be known for? Honestly, that would go to question um, number eight. And again, I would like to be known for um, my compassion, being able to help people that are in need of help and being able to help them in any way. I mean, if I could, you know, help them mentally, physically or financially, I would do so. And that to me is important. And that is what we all should do. Um, that's what life is all about is to help each other and unfortunately that just doesn't happen enough in in the world today so that's what I'd like to be known for question 18 what did you want to be when you grew up well honestly I don't think I've grown up yet but that's just me <laughs> um no Seriously, I wanted to be a vet. Uh, I've always wanted to help animals just as much as I love to help people. So the only thing that kept me from going to school to become a vet was um, it, it's just too expensive to go to university and my family couldn't afford it. So that was the only reason why I didn't pursue it. Question 19. This is our last question. What is the most memorable experience you've had when you were little? Oh, man. You know, there's a lot of memories that I have. And um, I honestly treasure each and every one of them. Um, I, I don't want to go over some of them because they could be really super long stories so maybe for another day I can go over some of them but one of the most memorable things I can say when I was really young is every summer my grandparents would fly us to um, to Seattle because we were living in California when we were small and we would spend our entire summer holidays with them and it was, we had a great time. My grandparents always took us fishing or we would go to Mount Rainier. Um, on occasion, we would go to the little county fairs. So that 
those to me, those types of memories are so important and they are so treasured. Um, so that's what I would say in that one. So by saying that everyone, we're going to go ahead and end this video. Um, again, I hope that you enjoyed it. If it's morning for you, have a very pleasant morning. If this is afternoon for you, have an excellent rest of your afternoon. And if this is evening for you, have a very restful evening. Again, my name's Janae, and thank you for joining me tonight on the Seattle Seahawks collaboration with Lisa from Diamond and Stitches. We'll talk again real soon.